As you mentioned, my name is Andy Damaris. Um, you can find me on all the social medias at Teradox, and my website is teradox.tech. So I want to talk about native JS web components. Um, we've heard a lot that no one's using them. Well, I do every single day. That's, uh, that's what I do for my job. Um, and Thank you, thank you. For those of you who don't know about web components, though, let's talk really quickly about them. I'm really going to focus on three pieces of the technology that come together to make web components. So web components aren't one thing, they're several things. Um, we first start by creating a class that extends the HTML element. That's one of the first parts of a web component. To, or in order to get style isolation, we have to attach a shadow DOM where our styles will go. So we use the attach shadow method that comes off of the HTML element. And the last thing we have to do is define that custom element with a custom elements registry. So these three pieces of native of native technology that we need um, are a part of most of the DOMs that we use every day. What's the problem that I'm really focused on with the unit testing, though, is I need native DOM functionality, but I really don't want to start a browser. It takes forever to start a browser. It kills my testing cycle. So most of you are probably thinking, oh, that's why we have Jest, right? We have JS DOM. Unfortunately, no. So JS DOM has not gotten to implementing the web component spec. There's actually been an open issue since 2015 when the web component spec was first being formed, and they still have not resolved this. As of October 28th, when the last update was, they still haven't resolved it. So we have to work around this problem. The way that I choose to work around this problem is I treat the window like any other third party. The window is just a third party to me. It's got a bunch of utilities in it. It's my low dash, right? So I just inject the window. I can pull the things off the window I need, and then it's like any other third party to me. So we can kind of accomplish this through some of our bundlers. So for Webpack, we can use the externals, where we mark the window as an external of window. And you might be thinking, wait, but Webpack uses something off the window object, right? So really quickly, window actually is self-referencing. So the window object has a window on it. So we can do window.window.window.window.window all day, and it's going to be able to self-reference. So that's why things like the externals in Webpack and globals in Rollup will allow you to grab that window object and inject it. So if you're not using a bundler like that, or you're using something where your bundler is abstracted from you, you can create a window MJS or window JS if you're just using a native JS. And this allows you to just create an abstraction away from the window so that you have some place that you can actually take over with a spy or a mock to be able to test. And with that, we have a seam, which is the number one thing we need in unit testing, right? We need a place that we can abstract away the code that we no longer care about from the code that we really want to focus on testing. So what does this actually look like in implementation? This is a basic example of what this could look like. It's, a, it's the bare minimum of what you would need to test that first module that I showed you. So we create an HTML class. We create an attached shadow method inside of that HTML class that actually sets the shadow root property to a standard div, which mirrors the shadow DOM pretty well. Um, and then we have a custom elements registry that has a simple define method on it. The last thing we do is we make sure to freeze that. We freeze it so that none of our tests can modify this and break any of our other tests, similar to what you would do for any other mocking library. And then we export that so that we can import it where we need it. So I covered a lot really quickly in this, in this talk. Um, all of this is in a bunch of examples on GitHub. Teradox slash .js 2019 has it. So there is examples from Jasmine, Mocha, and Jest. And there are examples of using Webpack, Rollup, and ESM for each of those testing. So please go and check it out. And thank you very much for your time. Appreciate it. Yeah.